So welcome back to the Health Chat. I'm Dr. Greg Knight. And I'm Dr. Greg Eckel. And we're back after a long break. It's been, what has it been, like two or two months? Yeah, we're, we're reporting now out of our van, uh, as you can see by <laughs> you can our see backdrop. see the backdrop here. It's a <laughs> little makeshift. Now, we're actually in a temporary space, very exciting times, <laughs> because um, our clinic, our regular clinic is being expanded because it we've is. had a lot of growth in uh, the biz. And so it's expanded and getting a whole makeover. And so now we've We've kind of set up a mass unit in this temporary space that we're operating out of right now. So it looks a little makeshift because yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. You can't see the beach and the ocean right behind the tapestry, right. but just know it's there. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we can put in the sound. <laughs> so. uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, breaking habits. Um, really, um, smoking cessation or I mean, it doesn't matter what the habit is. Really, um, there are so many commonalities between different ways that we develop unhealthy habits. And something that we're doing all the time in the clinic is helping people to break those unhealthy habits and develop healthy ones. Because, you know, humans are kind of habit-forming creatures, and so we just have to develop the healthy habits um, and make those a way of life. Indeed, and I'll even expand the topic a little bit, even just talking about how to create change and, mm -hmm. you know, and how we put together, how do we make change with people? So I think we're going to couch it in the habit talk, and I'll just keep chiming in on those. Right. Yeah. Um, so in, in thinking about uh, habits themselves, and so we're thinking about smoking is, obvi is obviously the main one, there can be drugs or alcohol or whatever those are. One of the initial kind of assessments that we have to do is to look at what the habit is, how intense it's been, and what deficiencies have been created as a result. We know without question that every habit that somebody has, unhealthy habit, has created deficiencies. And until those deficiencies are corrected, it's going to be very challenging to get the habit broken because the habit the habit and the deficiency feed each other um, in the sense that you know, nicotine will, will help to cover up the symptoms that are caused by the deficiency that the nicotine caused. Um, and so that becomes a vicious cycle. And so one of the things we're obviously working with initially is getting an assessment of what deficiencies have been created, B complex vitamins or magnesium. So some damage control. Things. Yeah. It's damage control. Damage and control. you have to get those uh, fixed. Um, and there are other kinds of nutritional interventions that can be done to help support the process of, of, uh, of lessening the intensity of that compulsion to continue in the habit. Um, and so that's the initial groundwork. But this is all in the context of a plan, a larger program to get someone from where they are in their health to being optimally healthy. Sure. Um, and. So whenever we're talking about breaking habits and forming new habits, um, we, we situate the person into the context of a larger plan uh, that includes many aspects of their health. Yeah, and this, I mean, it kind of couched in, number one, there's got to be a willingness in the participant to make change. Um, I actually, I screen all of my patients at this point, 10 years into practice, for their commitment level to their health. Um, I think a lot of times people are looking for a magic bullet of, Doctor, just give me the patch and, uh, you know, have it do all of the work for me. It doesn't really work that way. And that's why you see for, you know, smoking cessation, I think the average um, amount of times to quit were, are seven times of trying to quit. Yeah. And what, what I see is we want it to be sustainable. We want to get some wind in the participants' sails, so to speak, so that they actually start feeling a difference right off of the get-go. You know, when we were students, we both did rotations through addictions clinics, and this is the this is the kind of the one of the more famous components of acupuncture for addictions withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And we worked in a heroin withdrawal clinic, and all of those folks that were addicted to heroin, actually, I would say about ninety percent of them commented that nicotine was much harder to give up than yeah, heroin. That's true. And because nicotine is was at that time more socially acceptable. I think that it still is because it's a legal, um, it's a legal substance, right? You can buy it down at the five and dime down on the corner. Right. Um, so one, you know, kind of coming back around there, there's got to be a willingness to the participant. And then two, we want to create that treatment program full on of everything that you've heard us talk about, addressing diet, 
go after those deficiencies that were created by the substance and then create, um, create the change. I mean, that's the component which motivates me to get up in the morning is really meet people where they're at and then create the specific plan for them. Um, so there isn't that like magic bullet. Yes, we can release endorphins with the five needle protocol, putting needles into the ear um, or ear seeds into the ear. We can do that and we can really help. But what we have found and what Dr. Nye is going to mention next is getting the, the physical addiction is the easiest part to get over. It's the pattern that we find is the much harder component to break. Those, those patterns that we establish, and that's why we call it, kind of couch this in talking about habits. Um, you know, one component before he gets going on his uh, long-windedness over there is, uh, <laughs> um, is uh, you know, I, like to, um, I don't like to take things away from patients, so I really encourage folks to get what are we replacing that behavior with, right? Um, we'll just use smoking as one example is that's the old friend that served you at one point in your life. But now in your new health goals, that doesn't serve you anymore. And so what, how do you foresee, what do you project, how do you see yourself being without that old friend that's now dragging you down? Um, and so you, you want to address that a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. I think, well, certainly it's true that the pattern of the addiction is as difficult to break as the substance of the addiction. And uh, I think many people can identify with this around coffee. Some, there are a lot of people who will say that they have to have coffee, but many people, when I ask them, they put on their intake that they drink coffee every day, will say that they really can do without it, but they just really enjoy the ritual of it right. every morning. There's the ritual of coffee that is as addictive as the substance of the coffee. Or enjoyable, some would yeah, say. Yeah, enjoyable. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just like it. There's a yeah. whole ritual that develops around the morning coffee. And, and with other kinds of addictions, um, the pattern of the addiction is really challenging because much of that pattern has become unconscious. People who smoke throughout the day are not conscious of each time they're lighting up. They're not thinking about it each time. It's an automated behavior. It, it's just part of their daily routine. When they're in this environment at their at their work, oh, their break at work, and they step out onto this patio, yeah. and they at they this time the we go outside and we get to take a break. And so part yeah. of that process that you're talking about in creating change is bringing conscious awareness into those areas that have been unconscious before, because that's the first step that has to happen yeah. in creating in breaking the pattern and creating new patterns. You know, yeah. In a yeah. sense, we're really creating a mindfulness of present living in the, in the now moment. I right. mean, it's like really making you aware of all of the activities that you're doing. I think that is what that component of breaking the habit, the physical addiction, again, we can deal with that with Chinese herbs, Western herbs, acupuncture. There's a whole lot of different ways that we can address the, the physical addiction, the chemical imbalance, and then correct any imbalances that set up. But then it's that divorcing of the ritual uh, is a right. great way of putting yeah. that, is how do we create a new pattern and a new ritual for folks and a new kind of almost daily consciousness. So it's one way of looking at it as a mindful meditation practice as well. And you talked about creating change in a big way in, in people's lives and not separating out this notion of an addiction as a, as a separate thing that we're dealing with apart from the overall health and vitality that people have and the larger health goals that people have. And, and so that um, when we're talking about creating new habits, it's not just around that particular smoking, that, that changing the behavior around smoking is part of changes in their behavior around eating yeah. and around moving their body and around uh, patterns of thinking and, and all those so that it's all it's all put together into yeah. a larger context. Um, so yeah. those are, are just, I guess, a, a brief overview of the elements that we're thinking about with, um, with changing. Creating addiction. change. So yeah. just couching this one again, we're going to wrap it up. Um, you know, we're kind of coming at you at the beginning of the new year where all of those resolutions are. Um, but we are really creating change on a daily basis for patients. And um, for more information, you can definitely go check out our website. Uh, it's naturecuresclinic.com. We've got a whole video library out there and our podcast. We're making a commitment to you all to write more this year as well. And if you have any questions, specific questions, please send them in 
to yeah. questions at naturecuresclinic.com.